Hi there, so these lunchtime rows are designed to fit into any point in the day when you only have a small amount of time to go for a row and you need to get a good session, okay? So I'm not going to waste any of your time with one of my big long drawn out intros. We're going to get straight into some light rowing as a warm up and then I'm going to bore you with one of my long intros. No, 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 I'm going to describe what the session is. Don't worry, it's not boring, it's not boring. So we're going to get into this and we have to start off by setting up our machine. So bear with me while I race through this as quick as I can. On a concept two, go to the front of the machine and set your drag factor first. If you don't know where to set it, I do have a video up here, but probably around about 120 to 130. If you're not on a concept two, then just set the resistance to a point where you get a good feeling from the stroke, but you don't have to heave against it to get the machine moving. <gasps> Next up, go to your monitor and set it at eye height. So you don't have to look up, you don't have to look down, both of which will destroy your posture. And finally, go to your foot stretchers and set them to a height where as you come into the front of the machine, your shins can point vertically. Too high, you might not be able to get there too low you may go scooting straight past at hyperextend cause if nothing else power leaks okay uh, and that's it so a good ballpark for that is put the straps across the balls of your feet or the bottom lace on your shoe and then you can kind of adjust from there okay some people are different story right i've raced through that as quick as i can hopefully let's get into some light rowing for three minutes while we just kind of get our body ready for this and i describe what today's session is all right here we go in three two one let's go if only I could row as fast as I can speak. I do wonder when I race through an intro like that, as being the Scottish accent is quite fast and hard anyway. Do you understand anything I just said? <laughs> anyway, right. So you're just warming up. So you're not going full guns blazing yet. I just want you to put a good solid push into the machine so that you get your body moving. Don't worry about your actual pace, just make sure that you are pushing your legs into the machine to get the power in and that you are connecting your hands to the handle at the same time. And that's kind of vital in terms of power connection. And then start to ease your body off think about that forwards and backwards rock so you lean in to run about one o'clock on the clock face and then you drive with the legs and then you finish at around about 11 o'clock on the clock face then at the front of the machine keep your arms nice and straight to let the power flow through and you only pull at the back of the stroke okay nice and straight at the front pull at the back it's really important that bit if you grab early at the front you'll lose a lot of power and you'll end up with sore arms <laughs> so today's session what we're going to do is five minute blocks and we're going to do them as three minutes at 20 strokes per minute then one minute at 28 strokes a minute and then one minute rest I'm going to do that five times over but if you've only got 20 minutes rather than 25 you can of course stop after four but then you're going to miss out on the sting in the tail <laughs> those 20 strokes a minute sections you're going to do about 5 or 6 out of 10 effort level or 2k plus 18 and the 28s you're going to do as fast as you can 2k pace or faster preferably but you have to make sure and go fast to make use of this shorter session two more strokes one more Right, now if you're used to my main row long workouts rather than these quick lunchtime rows, you'll be like, where was the single leg uh, drills and arms only, body only and stuff? They come at the end and the cool down now. Eh? Okay, right, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just quickly uh, loading up lunchtime row two on the ErgZone app, which is a 25 minute row broken into one minute splits. Okay, so this way I can come back and I can look at how I got got on through the three 20 strokes a minute one minutes because obviously it's three minutes three times one 
then how I got on in the one uh, minute of 28s, and then obviously, who cares about the one minute rest? From a performance point of view, we're all gonna care about the one minute rest if we go hard enough, trust me. <laughs> and that really is the key. So I was saying at the end of that one, you have to make sure and hold your paces on this, okay? So that 28 strokes a minute, you have to go hard. You have to go as fast as you can. If you just back off, then um, you're not getting the value out of the workout. Right, hopefully that's been long enough between the light rowing and starting the session to make sure that your legs are nice and happy. Have a quick drink. And we'll get into our main session. Remember we're starting at 20 strokes a minute. Run about five or six out of 10, 2K plus 18 pace. And I'll describe what that is in a second, if you don't know. Okay, here we go then. In three, two, one, and we're off. So 20 strokes a minute. It's just the magical stroke rate for a few reasons. Firstly, because it's one stroke every three seconds, it means that you can think about the ratio of your stroke. And what you want it to be is that the drive speed is twice as fast as your recovery. So drive, recover. Drive, recover. And on a three second per stroke, that means one second drive, two seconds recover. So if you're kind of stuck on the whole idea of ratio, 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 so ratio? Words lost all meaning then 20 strokes a minute is the perfect one to do because you can just look at the timer and make sure that you drive and then recover for one second, two seconds. And this idea is kind of, I mean, the, that ratio gets a little bit, but the concept of driving faster than the recovery it's the same no matter what stroke rate you're doing. Because obviously, if you want to be able to recover for as long as possible, because it's literally that, recovery. You're not just recovering your body into the next stroke. You're actually recovering from the effort of the one you've just done. Right, so, in just under a minute's time, we're gonna go up to our first 28 strokes per minute sprint section. And I really want you to go fast on these, okay? I really, I can't, I'm not gonna bore you by saying this over and over again, but you have to go fast on these 28s. The 20s, you can maybe Drop a second or two off your pace, but those 28s, that's what this workout is all about. And actually, I don't want you to even drop that second or two. What am I saying? <laughs> so, you push harder with your legs here to get the stroke rate up and the power in. <clears throat> you ready? One more stroke. Here we go. So, when you push harder with the legs, what you get is a faster drive speed. And remember, I just spoke about the ratio between drive and recovery. So you still want them to be the same drive speed faster by a factor of two, a two to one ratio, or one to two, depending on your point of view. So if your drive speed goes up, your recovery goes up. And that should help you get your stroke rate up to 28. One more, and let's have a rest. And so that's what we're doing, okay? Three minutes 
at five or six out of 10, 2K plus 18 pace. One minute fast, one minute rest. Simple, but really effective. Now that five, six out of 10, whatever you just rode then, and you were like, well, this feels like a five or six out of 10 effort. That's the pace I want you to hold the 20 strokes a minute for the rest of the row, okay? Every time you do 20 strokes a minute, the speed you were just rowing at, even if it starts to feel like seven or eight out of 10, you still row at that speed, okay? So that's really important that you don't back off those 20s by too far. I don't want you to back off at all. 10 seconds to go. I can't believe I even said that. What did I say? Six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's go, 20 strokes a minute. Five or six out of 10, 2K plus 18. Now the reason I said about if you wanted to back off one or two seconds pace was just in case you're absolutely exhausted and about to fall off the machine. And you can't give the amount of power you need for the 28s. This row's kind of based around sprinting those 28s. It's still important to do these 20s really nice and solid and powerfully so that you're still needing to work here. But if dropping a second means that you can go proper 2k pace or faster on the 28s, then as long as you feel like you're getting a 10 out of 10 effort on those 20, 28s, then okay. But I'd rather that you were holding your pace on these 20s. And remember, this whole effort out of 10 thing is a really woolly way to talk about pace because one day you'll sit down and you'll feel like six out of 10 is say two minutes, five seconds pace. Don't worry if you don't know what I mean about that as a pace, I'll explain in a sec. Other days you might sit down and you really feel strong. In six out of 10, you're rowing at two minutes pace per 500 meters. Other days could be a bad day. And you're six out of 10, you're rowing at two minutes, 10 pace, because you just don't feel it. But chances are your body's perfectly fine. It's your brain that's telling you that you don't have it in you, which is where having a proper pace to work from, known as your 2K training pace, becomes even more important. But we're about to hit our next 28s, so I'm not gonna start talking about that yet. Remember, you're gonna push from the legs to get that stroke rate up. One more stroke. Here we go. Push. Push. And it can help to just get into the routine of pushing with your legs, but then shift your focus to your arms and the handle. So you keep your arms straight at the front of the stroke. You only pull at the back of the stroke, but then you send your arms straight back out again. You do not pause at the back. So straight back out, nice and straight before you recover to the front. Two more strokes, one more. Woo. So you, you pull in 
and then straight back out with arms and then the momentum of your arms and shoulders moving forwards is what leads in to that body rock so you go and that movement it's like your hands are also making your body tilt over your hips into that forward lean so that you finish away tilt hands are past your knees you're already in that forward lean and all you have to do is bend your knees and you slide to the front of the machine so you're not going right <laughs> okay seven seconds to go remember we start at 20 strokes a minute again two one go so same again 20 strokes a minute five or six out of ten effort bearing in mind one out of ten is just sitting on the couch watching tv with a bag of crisps in your hand four out of ten is like walking upstairs like 10 flights of stairs so that gives you an idea of where five or six out of ten should be should probably have talked about that at the beginning not 10 minutes in but hey so 2k training pace if you don't know what that means now hopefully the machine that you row on shows your speed as the current time it would take for you to row 500 meters that's your 500 meter split time so for me right now i'm rowing at pace that i would cover 500 meters in two minutes and three seconds and so what you do is you row 2000 meters so you enter 2000 meters into your monitor and row it as fast as you can as long as it's medically okay for you to do it because it's a really tough row and if you have any medical issues it could be bad news so make sure your doctor's okay with you doing really intense workouts row 2000 meters and then divide the time it took you to cover it by four and that gives you the average time to cover 500 meters in that time trial and that result is your 2k training pace so if you did it in 840 divide that by four your 2k training pace is two minutes and 10 seconds and when i say 2k plus 18 that means you row it two minutes and 28 seconds 18 seconds slower than your 2k training pace and the genius here is that it means that the paces i tell you to row at are attached to your ability not just some random pace that i'm yelling out at you one more stroke and then 28 here we go push remember what i said about the hands away so in out in a nice rhythm you pull in and send out at the same speed with no pause you don't hold the handle into your chest use the natural rebound of your shoulders your rib cage your core muscles to help your hands come forwards again Whew. three two one ah. what I mean is a few put your feet on the floor 
and then just do this pretend you're rowing if you get your elbows through your sides like I'm doing through your sides you'll feel your body naturally wants to reset them again only to about there but that bounce is enough of a momentum for you to carry your arms forwards effortlessly whereas if you hold or if you flare out your elbows too much you don't get that bounce so then you have to use your own energy to get your arms forward quick drink is 11 seconds to go back in the straps four three two one go back to 20 strokes a minute again for some strange reason my body was like go 28 go 28 <laughs> on, on that first stroke that's okay I've calmed down what my late mum would call getting the wind in your fur it's like you know well cat owners will understand this but if you've got a cat and it suddenly springs up and goes a bit mad lots of energy so she used to call getting the wind in their fur and that's kind of if ever I'm a little bit overzealous that's what I call it it's the same with if you're driving and you look down and you're suddenly doing like 10 miles an hour over the speed limit not that I ever do that so that's illegal but if I were to do that I would say that the car had the wind in its fur because it was all like okay come on come on, come on. and that's gonna what happens so a lot of people when they row a 2000 meter time trial which I was talking about in the last section is that they'll start off really fast but then 500 meters into it they have to slow down by like 15 seconds or something in order to be able to continue and so that's where the value of knowing how fast you can row 2,000 meters really helps because it means in the example I gave before say you started at like 1 minute 50 but then you blew up and had to slow down to 2 minutes 30 but your average was still 2.10 because you finished at 8 minutes 40 then next time you just sit down and start rowing at 210 and hold it until the end and see if you've got room for a sprint at the end of it rather than the start okay four three two last one here and then up to 28s here we go push for those legs remember straight arms at the front and that forward tilt over your hips with a good posture you're not curling in your upper or lower back you're just hinging backwards and forwards over your hips and try and hold that forward tilt and straight arms for at least half of the leg drive almost there three two one oh. So it's important 
that you go into the front, tilted over your hips with a good posture, not like this, good posture. And then as you push, hold that forward tilt, straight arms, until your legs are about halfway. Then you swing over your back as you finish the leg drive. Then you pull in your arms to a finish. Push away, rock, bend knees. Do that 200 odd times and hopefully you'll cover 2,000 meters. Ooh, 15 seconds to go. Then we hit our last one. Good news. But what about the sting in the tail? Five, four, three, two, one, go. Well, now that you're rowing this last five minute set, I can tell you about a sting in the tail to this row. More astute people out there will probably have worked out that by the time we do three minutes at 20, then one minute at 28, we've still got one minute left to finish the row. And there's not much point just sitting here for a minute at the end and then starting a cool down, etc. And so, what we do with that last 28? Oh dear, I gave it away. <laughs> Instead of doing one minute at 28 strokes a minute, we do two. Look at the smile on my face. So, yeah, hold rate and pace at 28 strokes a minute as fast as you can for the last two minutes of this row and this is the important part really when it comes to making sure that this short 25 minute row gives you the workout you need for such a short amount of time this will be what takes you up into the proper intensity to leave you with a proper workout. And I should know, this is my third day in a row doing this session due to microphone problems, which I hope are solved now, but that's why I've got two microphones running today because as much as I love this session I don't want to do it for a fourth time quite yet and I seem to have developed production standards and so I don't want to just bodge something together in the edit suite from my previous rows okay three Two, one, 28 strokes a minute. Let's go. Push with the legs to get that drive speed up. And if you have that forward tilt, your arms are straight and your fingers are just hooked over the handle rather than a death grip so thumbs underneath but not touching your index finger just fingers hooked those straight arms the forward tilt as you push with the legs you should feel like you are hanging off the handle and that push from your legs 
is surging into the handle as your fingers just brace against it remember you're not pulling at the front if you see your elbows bending early at the front of the machine try to stop it keep them straight only pull at the back of the stroke here here we go then four three two one oh. ah. so for me I ended up 97% of my maximum heart rate when rowing but I'm still I'm only two weeks recovery into getting COVID do you remember COVID? so my body's still and I mean I was rowing that around about five seconds slower than my actual 2k pace so I was at 150 most of the time instead of 145 because I still don't have whew, the power and strength now if you have time which I hope you do let's do a two minute cool down doing the drills and then I'm going to go to some stretching afterwards but of course if you have to bail go shower get back to work then bye just remember to do some stretching and if you're going to do the stretching in the shower please be careful I don't want you to slip and fall okay most important ones to do are your quads and hamstrings if you're just going to try and squeeze in some kind of a stretch right so two minute cool down start off with one foot in the straps one foot on the floor you ready three two one go so just slow it down use this as a drill to help you with your body angles it's much easier to get your forwards and backwards tilt and delay it when you've only got one leg strapped in it helps with your compression and stuff so you still want a good stroke it's just you've got one foot on the, gr on the ground that's the only difference let's swap feet oh, easy for me to do because I'm in socks of course just watch you don't over compress because again because you've only got one leg in it's really easy to go right into the front of the machine but you just want those shins have vertical your back just leans forwards to one o'clock arms nice and straight two more here and then we'll put both legs back in here we go legs straight and roll with your back and arms so you pick up the handle to the flywheel with your back swing first and then you pull in your arms then arms away and then rock forwards again okay so your arms trigger that forward rock and your back is followed by the pull I mean that's the wrong way around but you get what I mean let's roll to the front arms straight forward tilt press out with your legs not too hard because all I want you to do is concentrate on driving with the legs while holding this forward tilt and straight arms position and trying to make sure that as you push your feet that's when you feel your handle connect to the flywheel or water wheel or hamster wheel whatever you're using Can we do two more let's do one more Whoa. there we go right chances are you just had time to join me for that and you've now you're now scurrying off to the shower in which case goodbye if however you have time then climb off the machine and while I say goodbye to you a rather stern looking mini me has just appeared in the corner of the screen Hello. Uh, and we'll take you through some stretching okay so the important ones as far as I'm concerned after a row there's other ones to do but these are the more important ones are the hamstrings glutes hip flexors and quads for your legs 
that should make sure that you're nicely stretched off there and then shoulders back uh biceps remember do the rotate for the biceps um and forearms so when you pray and push into yourself triceps and stuff are if you'll see me do them as well very good but yeah like i say if you have stretches that you need to do for your body then either ignore what he's doing and do your stretches or add them into what he's doing um sometimes supine twists a little bit of yoga stuff on the ground also helps if you have lower back issues okay so if you want to find out more about if you've got like sore muscles and stuff or if you're wanting to look how to build and all that stuff i don't particularly go into that because i mean look at me i'm i'm not a muscle bound guy i kind of I do functional weights to help my rowing and i needed to try and stay down at my kind of lightweight status so i don't really pack on muscles even though i think i've got some muscles but if you want to actually get into i want to properly stretch i want to properly build muscle then I really just go to the Athlean X guy. Jeff Cavalier is incredible. He's like an encyclopedia of information. If you have either a question about a tight muscle or if you have a question about how to build a muscle, you just type it into Athlean X and I pretty much guarantee he's made a video about it. And the great thing is, is that he's not only uh, really informative, he's actually really entertaining. He's quite a kind of a, not dry, but he's a very straight earnest guy as he tells you the information because he knows it and he wants you to understand but he makes really entertaining videos with him and his uh uh friend whatever sidekick uh jesse so they're really worth i mean his videos get like 12 and a half million views each um at least so um it, it's really well worth it. it shows that people really respond to what he does it's fantastic um i keep on meaning to get in touch just to see if, if you do reply anyway but just to say about listen how do you how do you do it from if you're like this constantly rowing but you want to add muscle as well because they don't really go hand in hand that often, that the idea of like lots of cardio, um, but trying to add muscle as well, especially when you get to mid forties like me. Um, I know, I could you, you wouldn't have thought it, would, oh, thank you. Oh, that's very kind of you, thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so anyway, go and see Jeff Cavalier. How's he getting on? He's doing okay. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed today, so I can get back on track now. Hope you enjoyed today's row. Now, these lunchtime rows, like I said right at the very beginning, aren't meant to just be at lunchtime, okay? So any time that you need to just squeeze in a row, these rows are going to sit there like a little emergency kind of, um, if a, <laughs> an emergency break glass and do, do one of these. They're not meant as a plan. You don't string these together uh, to get a plan. They are all kind of meant as, like I say, these... Um, uh, emergency things that you just kind of go right uh, I'm in the middle of a plan but I've only got 20 minutes over my lunch right now so what am I going to do what am I going to do you do this kind of a row okay and then you, that hopefully then brings you back into just kind of t keeps you topped up really in terms of the uh, amount of workload that you've got and you can hopefully not kind of fall backwards if you otherwise would have had to miss a day okay so like I say it's not point of a plan um, and the reason I'm doing that is because I'm completely uh, rubbish for time right now I've got with, due to work uh, loads, um, I, I can't make my usual long videos that I make, so I'm having to squeeze these in. So <laughs> until I can find some kind of uh, uh, rich person that wants to get fit by rowing that's willing to bankroll me and I don't have to work anymore, I'm afraid we're going to have to work in and out of what's going on um, with my uh, workload at work. So yeah, although I do have a plan. My plan is to kind of give up all this work nonsense and then move to Vegas. <laughs> of course, Vegas haven't been there. Um, and then find lots of uh, uh, rich people that are like gambling and have spare money in Vegas, but who can need to get fit and would like to do that via rowing and uh, and all that kind of stuff and, and like looking at diet and things. Um, and, uh, uh, and that'd be what I do during the day. And then at night, I'll then go play the drums for a band called Spandex Nation. And it's really, I think it's a perfect plan. Bit of a flaw, as being that Spandex Nation do have a drummer. Um, so I don't really think they'd be like looking for somebody. But hey, it's still good to have a plan, all right? <laughs> anyway, error, error, right, sorry, sorry. So uh, where are we? Yeah, so thank you very much for, for rowing this one. I hope to see you in the next, oh, um, hashtag, let's just do hand, hashtag Spandex Nation. Spandex or the next, <laughs> just to try and, because why not? Why not get the word out to them? That that's, yeah. Um, yeah, is that me? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's me. So yes, thank you so much for doing this. I hope to see you in another video. I can see from the meter on my camera that this microphone has died again. So let's really hope that my backup pack has recorded this because I really don't want to do this again. Obviously, this headset's completely playing up. Yeah, as I can see it coming back when I did that. Well, that's a pain. I'm going shopping on Amazon. All right, you look after yourselves. I'll stay, uh, I'll stay safe. I'll stay safe. You make sure to stay safe too. I'll see you in the next video. Stay, stay safe, be well, bye-bye.